Bonjour everyone, I am Yann, your favorite friendly Frenchman, and welcome to the 100 video on my channel. That's right, I felt like it was a big event that called for more than just the start of a new playthrough, so I decided to make a tour of the first park that I've ever posted on the workshop before I went on to make Parc Ciel Bleu. This is Golden Nut Park. It's almost a year old because I started Parc Ciel Bleu around the 23rd of March last year, and I'm so excited to show it to you guys, despite the fact that it is an unfinished park, I think it's very interesting to see how I've evolved thanks to one full year of Planet Coaster builds, because, well, you'll be able to compare it to everything else I've made so far. I want to thank you so much for watching, I'm so grateful that you're here with me, no matter if you've just joined our big family, or if you've been there since I first released Parc Ciel Bleu. Being able to have you in my little community is honestly a dream come true, because you're bringing me so much joy, and I hope I get to do the same for you. But with all that emotional stuff out of the way, why don't we start talking about the park? Golden Nut Park is a reference to the Planet Coaster logo that's included in the in-game scenery. It was made using mostly Frontier blueprints, but I tried making some of my own stuff for the first time in this park too. It has 8 different themed lands and yes, it was planned to be a mega park, although the areas I started building towards the end are somewhat less fleshed out, so be ready to feel that at one point. Same thing with the coasters, they are not smooth at all, and that's because I only started using the 4 meter method in Parc Ciel Bleu. Nevertheless, I hope that you will enjoy this special park tour with me. Why don't we get started now? And welcome everyone to Golden Knot Park. Now, most of you guys, I assume, uh, do not know Golden Knot Park and what Golden Knot Park is. And essentially, Golden Knot Park was what I was working on before I moved on to Parc Ciel Bleu. Well, about a year ago, actually, I started working on Parc Ciel Bleu around March 20th. And I think you guys are going to get that video to... Um, I think it's gonna release like on March 17th. So yeah, about about a year ago, I I not only gave up on this park, but I probably uh, started working on Parc Ciel Bleu at the time. And I, I I don't know. You might you might know Parc Ciel Bleu. I always mention it. But anyway, welcome to Golden Nut Park. And oh my God, it feels so nostalgic and weird to be back here. Um, the gist of it is that all of this park is only Frontier Blueprints, so if you're familiar with Frontier Blueprints, you might know a lot of what uh, you're seeing right now. Uh, it's essentially here, I use the World Fa World, blah, blah, blah. World's Fair, there we go, um, pack to use the Moroccan building, the Moorish buildings, and, uh, and I mixed in some Spanish architecture with the Riviera stuff and the pirate stuff. And uh, it looks so weird, actually, now that I think about it. But, uh, hey, whatever. It, it was my first decent build, really. And so you have a restaurant, you have uh, a hotel. We have three hotels in this park, actually, uh, which is actually pretty interesting. And Something that's also really interesting is that you might have realized uh, when we entered the park, but we're in the desert map, so yeah. As you can see, it's pretty big. It's not done at all, especially the, the, the lens at the back over there, like the one with the BNM invert over there, and uh, the pirate uh, uh, boat ride over there. It's definitely not... Uh, there, there are two areas that aren't finished, and I think also the, the Bavarian area is not finished, and the back of the forest area isn't finished. So, why don't we crack on? Why don't we start doing some things? Uh, I'm just realizing that this time is still passing, so yeah, there we go. I've put it at 10 a.m. so that we can keep it at daytime. Uh, we should start with, with what I started working on uh, when I first, well, began the park. And it is, you can see it right there, it is Forest Wind. Uh, I wanted that kind of coaster that felt, um, how could I say, old in the park, like uh, 
Uh, is it Viper at Magic Mountain? Well, some Vekoma thing, anyway. And uh, yeah, I think that Forest Wind definitely serves that purpose. So why don't we ride it and... Uh, whoop. Pause the thing, otherwise it's gonna be <laughs> it's gonna be departing without us. But yeah, um, why why don't we ride it, guys? Welcome back, and as you can see, it is one of the roughest rides I've ever done. At the time, I didn't... well, mo actually, all of the coasters uh, are not done with the 4-meter method, so they're not smooth at all, and this one is definitely the first one I've, I've done, and it, it you, you can feel that. It, it's... even for a Vekoma, it's way too rough. Like, ugh. Especially that drop, like, ugh, oh my god. What a neck breaker. The loop is not too bad, but of course that is one of the in-game loops. And this thing is absolutely horrible. Then the transition with the corkscrew is actually not as bad as I remembered. How about this? Oh yeah. This here is horrible. You have your neck broken several times. Definitely. I actually really like this Elix. It really reminds me of, uh, of, uh, what's it called? Uh, Rock and Roller Coaster or, uh, or Space Mountain at Disneyland Paris. So, yeah, pre pretty good, actually. Like, there were some good ideas, but definitely, it, it, and it's gonna be the, the, the theme with, uh, with the whole park, it, is that I lacked, um, how, how could I say it? I lacked execution, you know. The, the ideas were there, but the execution wasn't there, and that was basically me learning how the game worked in order to make a, a, a ride that, well, ride a park that was uh, actually pretty good. And is, as you can see here, we have this sort of um, stone archway, rock ar archway, really. And uh, that is definitely my first time messing around with the rocks. And uh, I think I've actually done a pretty good job. And you can see I, I started doing something with the, the western rocks. And that's why we're not going to go this way just yet. Because the, the way this park was... Uh, so this park is a loop, you know. As you can see over there, there is a loop. Uh, th there is a lake, sorry, not a loop. And essentially, the park loops around the lake. The lake. It's a, it's a circle, uh, except that uh, that uh, invert over there and the the, the hyper and the, the mine train. There, those are uh, in um, in um, crap. I, I always forgot the name of those things. You know, in uh, in secluded areas. That's not the, the the thing I wanted to say. But you get you get what I mean. So. Uh, in this area, we have a little chair swing, and I re this is the moment I fell in love with uh, Tale of an Elder Heart, I think it is. It it's such a beautiful song, probably my favorite song in, um, in uh, the Planet Coaster uh, OST. So yeah, so we won't go there just yet, because that's something I, I added later, and... Yeah, because the park is essentially a circle, 
the way I, I built it is that I started with uh, Forest Wind and then I went on to the western area, the Mesa area actually. And uh, yeah, already you can see that there is a little bit of progress <laughs> with the theming and a, a little bolder move. Even though the, um, for the first thing that I've built, the, the Moorish area is pretty good. I just wanted this area to be pretty basic because that would have been what was added uh, in the park well with the park when the park opened so that that's why it, it's so bare but then when you go into the mesa area and also what you can see is that every area is trying to be very um, immersive so that you don't really see uh, the building from the Moorish place or uh, the next land you can kind of see the pirate ship and some of the trees outside, but that's okay. So here we have a Monteleon. Oh my god, what is going on with me today? A Monteleon, there we go. Um, it's called Mesa Crater, and essentially it's as if a meteorite had been had crashed into this crater and created this crater, rather. And uh, they've put a ride into it. And I thought that was a good idea, and I think it fits. And then the main event for this place is Mesa Buster that is just about to drop up there. And uh, yeah, you can see that I tried some new things, especially because this blueprint uh, doesn't have the, the, the cogs and the, the steam blowing and everything. So I, I really started experimenting with things on my own, adding to buildings and... Uh, and uh, removing things from, from buildings, so uh, I, I think that it's pretty interesting to see how that was a thing and uh, what I'm doing right now in Planet Coaster, which is uh, uh, night and day, totally. In one year, I've, I've definitely improved so much. Oh, the little hats on the side of the hat shop, I've never noticed that. That's cool, that's really cool. So yeah, Mesa Buster is definitely the highlight of the Mesa area. And also, something I started doing in this park is uh, coloring the outfits for the employees different for every single area. So as you can see here, they have some cowboy kind of colors. Oh, and we have uh, Miss Ellie right there. And then when you go over there, uh, there are more uh, the Dune Delights colors, you know, right there, we can see it, that's better. There we go. Anyway, let, let's go back. I'm so sorry I'm all over the place because I have so many things to tell you guys in so little time. But anyway, let's go on Mesa Buster now. And again, using the rocks and learning to use the rocks, especially uh, combining it with terrain and everything, uh, which is something I haven't done on the big mine train project for some reason, but hey, you can you can be good at everything, like from the start. You know, you have to to try new things over and over again, and uh, until until you're good at it. And especially the coasters in this area is definitely um, in this park, not this area. My bad. <laughs> you can tell I haven't been recording for a while. And uh, and that I'm saying weird shit. Anyway, so let's go on Mesa Buster, guy, guys. Bob. Oh my god, what is going on with me today? But yeah, it, it, it is a good one. I really like it. It's kind of my uh, my big thunder mountain, but wooden. <laughs> anyway, enjoy, guys.
So something that you can definitely see with my earlier coasters is that my brake runs are terrible. Like, I mean it, they're really terrible. They're so short, they're really bad. And uh, yeah, the layouts actually on that thing is not too bad, actually. It's not realistic at all, not like uh, a wooden coaster would ever do that. Well, they would do that, but uh, I, I mean, you know, uh, sliding, well, traveling around messes and everything. I, I don't think that would be something that would be realistic. Uh, if not for a Disney park, and Disney would never do a, a wooden coaster, let's be honest. But otherwise, I think the layout was quite good, to be honest. Like, so, something that's really interesting is that, from uh, my perspective today... Oh my god, bonjour! Bonjour, look at this! <laughs> this thing predicted the bonjour. <laughs> I, I swear, that's not even me that put it. It's just something that comes with the Monsieur Frit over there. But anyway. <laughs> so yeah, I'm really happy with that with that layout, with that coaster. I think it's really fun. And um, yeah, I think we're, we're pretty much done. Uh, oh yeah, you might see that this guy is colored differently than those guys. And it's because some of the employees will do the full loop uh, between the areas for the whole park. Those janitors are the same, actually. And uh, that's because some of the work rosters work pretty weirdly, and therefore some employees cannot get to some places. Uh, for instance, this transitional place cannot be accessed by uh, employees from the Mesa or the next area, so... Uh, I had to put some of those guys in, and uh, that works really fine. I, I was already obsessed with, manage with the management side of the game because I really like um, playing with that. Like my father was uh, really into the the Roller Coaster Tycoon series because of that management side uh, of the of the games, and I was more into the creative side every time. But I really like paying attention to uh, the man management thing anyway. And uh, you can see that in that park definitely with uh, all of the attention to my employees. Anyway, that's not the, the, the point of this thing. But for the next area, we'll have to turn it to night. There we go. And as you can see also, uh, the lighting with this entire area is really orange and really orange over there as well. Uh, I, I think it's pretty... Pr well, pretty, just pretty. I, I, I just got startled by uh, those lights, but I remember that there are some projectors over there. Well, that, that's not very relevant right now. Anyway, let's move on to the next area, and I think you guys will be really interested to see this next area, because we have a margin area. That's right. I don't think you guys ever realize that I've done something sci-fi in any of my parks, but now you do realize that. And uh, I just love this area so, so much. I, I wanted to um, pay an homage to Outer Wilds in this area, and that's why the main coaster, which is an Intamin multi-launch coaster, is called, well, the, on the sign it says Elegy for Rings, and it's not the onion rings, for example. <laughs> it's actually Elegy for the Rings, which is a song in the DLC for Outer Wilds, uh, Echoes of the Eyes. So yeah, what can we say about this place? Um, first of all, the lighting. I, I, I really love, that's where when I fell in love with lighting things in Planet Coaster in general because doing lighting on those rocks, which are essentially the exact same rocks as uh, the Mesa area, but as you can see on that big Mesa thing, like on this side is orange and it's really, you know, because of the lighting, it really feels cowboy-y. That's a weird word that doesn't even exist, but anyway. <laughs> and on this side, it's greenish blue, that, that ghost matter kind of, uh, uh, color and I really really love this uh, I, I really fell in love with the fact that I could use the same similar thing but 
put a different color on top of it to make it feel different. Anyway, so here we have all the blueprints from uh, Frontier with uh, the, 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 the shops and I, I think they're pretty good actually, they're pretty good. Some of the signs are a bit janky but we know that. And here we have actually one of the flat rides which is Martian Atom. And it's so funny to me to have such a sci-fi area and have a vintage flat ride into it. <laughs> But I just really like the the way it looked with uh, that big circle thingy, whatever it, this is. Honestly, I don't even know. <laughs> it just looked really cool, and I put it several times in in this area. But anyway, let's go to Elegy for the Rings because this ride is really really cool, and I really like the feel of it all. I don't even have a storyline for this thing, like, nowadays when I do a park, I usually tell you guys what my storyline is, but in this park there just isn't, it's just a feel, and thank god that the feel is pretty much right from the start, because uh, otherwise this would be a pretty bad park. Well, it is a pretty average park in my opinion. Like, I don't really like it, I don't really love it, I just love it for the nostalgia of it, but uh, I really like what I tried and, and I always respect where I come from as a creator, so that's what's really important for me overall. But anyway, this is actually my first indoor station uh, I've ever done and I remember struggling a lot with this. like. It, it was a nightmare for me at the time and I was like, I, nope, I'm never gonna do a station ever again. And, uh, and then I did the Convergence, I did Ibex, I did um, Vendée Globe Experience, I did uh, uh, Bête de Gévaudan, and yes. So now we're fine, I can do a station anytime you want. That's pretty easy for me to do. But yeah, I, I really, really struggled, especially because that was probably the first building I've done with... Uh, it's pretty loud in there. Let me get out there. There we go. So that we can see the launch as well. Yay! And then there's going to be another one that comes on the other side and yay! Love this thing. Absolutely love this thing. But yeah, you, you guys might think that it is uh, inspired by Terran, and it's not actually. It wasn't inspired by anything, which is really funny to me. But anyway, let's ride Elegy for the Rings, guys. And honestly, that was not too bad. I was expecting worse. That is not the smoothest ride, of course. Not, and do not expect any of my rides in this park to be smooth because they're not. Um, however, the idea of the ride is pretty good. But it's definitely too fast on that inversion over there. And this is definitely a stall. Like, look at that. That is a huge stall. Installed loop that doesn't make any sense. That's never been done in, 
in real life and the supports oh my god don't get me started on the supports like look at that that thing is not even supported but it's a really nice idea and uh, I don't know it, it, it's pretty good and it's uh, the name is from Outer Wild so it's got extra points but anyway that's pretty much it with the with the uh, the, 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 the sci-fi margin area and uh, honestly I really like it again those <laughs> look horrible but uh, next up would have been the pirate area but unfortunately or fortunately actually um, the next area I want to show you and the next area I built in uh, in the order well that's the order for today you know I show you the areas as I've built them is on the other side of the park and it's the Riviera area so I'm gonna take that chance to um, switch it back today if it lets me there we go and uh, yeah you can see it doesn't have the same kind of charm during the day but uh, that's okay you know that's not too bad anyway let's go through the mess area Oops, lantern, the Moorish coast, the forest, and here we are. So, the forest was sort of the classic area, that's why it's got the, the, the bumper cars now and the, the, the carousel, the Europe carousel, but that was also meant to be some place to see the mine train, the Bavarian mine train over there. Which is pretty cool. Uh, I like it. If it was finished, it would it would be cool. <laughs> and uh, this place would have led to um, let me right to the China area. Actually, it, it was planned. I wanted. I always wanted to do an Asian area, but oh my God! Look at the hyper. Really inspired by Shambhala, this uh, this element right there. That's not too bad, actually. But we'll get to that in a f few tens of minutes, I would assume. Anyway, let's crack on so you guys can see that way faster. And then you have the Riviera area. And so the Riviera area is kind of a an amalgamation, let's say, of different countries that are close to the water. So essentially you have Italy right there with uh, the gelato, the, the pizzeria and uh, the toilets of course and then you have uh, more of um, the can, you know, Côte d'Azur and um, Marseille from France <laughs> Marseille from France, like there is... I, I don't think there is any other, other Marseille but hey whatever with the Riviera Hotel and uh, the Levant set over there uh, really French architecture and then you go to Spain with the churros with uh, the water and the juice <laughs> because of course those two things well actually the juice do come from Spain uh, with the oranges the, the naranjas actually as you call them and uh, here we have a top spin actually this is the only attraction of the of the of the the, 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 the area but the other attraction of the area is definitely this view. We're all the way across the park and uh, that's pretty good. I really like the lake feeling because it's got this Epcot quality to it, you know, uh, you, that you can be on one side of the lake and, or the other and you will always see what's uh, on the other coast, so to speak, <laughs> of the lake. And uh, I think that is pretty cool. I started working with the, the viewpoints when I s realized that those were a thing. And uh, yeah, those guys are taking pictures. They're pointing over there like, oh my God, that's where we came from. Look how far we've come. And <laughs> what was that voice? I don't know. But anyway, so yes, the top spin. This is La Tortilla. And um, essentially it's just a top spin placed there. I really like the setting though. like. The setting of this little Spanish neighborhood is pretty nice and I really like it actually. It looks like a swimming pool actually. But I'm never doing one of those again, like ever. 
Well, in Planet Coaster, maybe, but in real life, I've been on one at a fun fair once, and that was horrible. Like, look at how this thing moves. Like, that thing actually does move like that, and that is the most unsafe feeling in the world. Like, I totally hate fun fairs in general. I'm so sorry for you guys who might like those, but I, I'm not a fan of fun fair rides. I'm so sorry. And they're pretty expensive as well compared to, to theme parks where you pay for a whole experience, you know. Anyway, uh, we won't go towards those two areas just yet because those are the last two areas that I've worked on. The next area that I've worked on is definitely this pirate area. But something that you might have realized is that s most of this is rocks. And you might be wondering why. Well, essentially, you know that I'm on the desert, des oh my god, desert map, desert? Do you want dessert? <laughs> a desert map, there we go. Sometimes my accent just doesn't work. Y you know, I'm French, so I'm supposed to, to speak like that, you know, and uh, I don't really like uh, speaking English because I'm French. I actually hate the English and... Uh <laughs> but no, I, I'm, I love my made-up accent, my made-up American accent. Which is not really American, it's just an amalgamation of so many accents, man. Anyway, but what I was saying is that I didn't choose um, the terrain for the correct terrain for what projects I had, especially that pirate area. And uh, so I had to put rocks everywhere. And that's a big problem I had with the park that really discouraged me to continue. But overall, like, okay. From this angle, the pirate area looks ass. Like, it's, it looks so bad. Like, it looks unfinished, and it is. But if you look at it from this angle, that looks good. That looks pretty good, actually. I really like it. And uh, this pirate area would have been really cool if the, 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 the boat ride would have been finished. But, you know, that's the way it is. I think I'm at 83% of on this thing. And if you guys actually want to finish this park, you can. It's on the workshop. It's been on the workshop for a year now. And uh, it's on my profile. So you just have to type in, uh, well, if you're on PS5, yes. If you're on PS5, you can download it, finish it. And uh, you just have to type my uh, my gamer tag. That is uh, YanBK1608. And uh, you, you'll find it very easily, and you can finish that if you want. Uh, good luck to you if you try that. But <laughs> hey, that is a, that is a, that would be a nice park to try to finish, or just you know, I would really like you guys to appropriate appropriate yourself that park. That, is that even a correct sentence? You you get what I mean. Anyway, let's crack on. Uh, what I really like about this area is from an overhead view. It looks like a keyhole, like a chest, you know. Uh, and you you put the key in there, and uh, because it's a pirate area, uh, it, it it references the chest. Whatever. <laughs> it was fun. I thought it was pretty cool. And uh, speaking of of paths, actually, I really like how this central plaza, the the Lockjaw Plaza, works, because you have the the, the main plaza here to. Uh, have that sort of roundabout feeling to it and then you have the elevated platforms that get you to the shops to the chief beef to the smoothie shop the coffee shop the toilets and the third and final hotel actually for this video over there it's probably the worst hotel though let's be honest but anyway and the captain's license right because you can buy some uh, those like those janitors want to buy some pirate hats this is actually the first part where I started doing hats. Are you guys okay? It's okay, it's a flash mob, guys. Anyway, uh, but yeah, the, what I was saying is that every single area has their own hats. Unfortunately, there are only those bugged sci-fi guys. Oh, there we go. So those guys have been to the, to the pirate area, so they've bought hats from those pirate area but then those guys have bought hats from the sci-fi area and so on and you have uh, the cowboys as well 
And I think we have something at the Bavarian area as well. I'm not sure though. But anyway, so yeah, enough talking. Let's go to Lockjaw's Trials, which is, oh my god, which is probably one of the worst rides in there because it's unfinished. Look at it. It's unfinished. Oh my god. I mean, it had a lot of potential, but that's always what it is, you know. I made a bad, well, not a bad park, an unfinished park, and then I went, I, I go on to do a, uh, a finished park that is actually more, a more humble project. Let's let's put it that way. It's not too ambitious. And so yeah, there is Golden Knot Park, so that's this park. Uh, then I went on to create Parc Ciel Bleu, which was totally finished, even updated over time. And um, then I went on to Marvelous Realms, which was also unfinished because it was so badly <laughs> optimized. <laughs> uh, I'm laughing, but I'm actually totally crying right now. And uh, then I had Simple Park to make up for Marvelous Realms, which is actually probably my best park. Simple Park is, is amazing. I love, like, compared to... I know we're supposed to talk about Golden Knot Park th today, but compared to, to Parc Ciel Bleu, Parc Ciel Bleu really has that early feeling to me, and uh, it doesn't look that good to me. But Simple Park is probably as far as I can take the Western genre. Uh, genre? Is that is that even? <laughs> Do parks have genres? The theme. There we go. The Western theme um, for a park. That's probably as far as I could ever take it. Probably can mix. Oh, that gives me an idea for the future, actually, but not for for the park I'm working on right now. Anyway, we'll, we'll I'm getting sidetracked. We we should ride this thing, and uh, actually we won't ride it because it's probably five minutes long, and there's not much to see, so no no real point of getting um, stuck on a boat for so many hours. I mean, it's cool in real life. It's really relaxing in real life, but for this video we won't. So you have this first drop, unfortunately this place looks so bad because it's unfinished and it would have dropped you into the city with the classic uh, sword fight pirate and everything, explosions, really cool thing actually. And uh, then you went around the hotel, you would have seen a little bit of the temple, Amazonia kind of area over there, and then you went back around the the, the, um, the pirate village and I, I think this is probably the the best feature of the the boat ride is to you know circle the the pirate village anyway and then you go here and you drop into the lake go under the this mast of the pirate ship and you go under the wooden bridge and there you go you're back at the station <laughs> so we've done that in one minute something that would have taken us probably five or six minutes so honestly like when you look at this area it was really promising but unfortunately that's when I realized that I wouldn't have the room or the space like percentage wise to uh, do what I, what I actually wanted. Anyway, let's go back near the Riviera area and go to that temple area. I really, really wanted to do a temple area and I'm so disappointed with myself of what I've done. <laughs> because actually, doing a temple in Planet Coaster, uh, 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 an adventure theme in Planet Coaster, is actually pretty hard. Like, it... it the pieces are so good, but you have to be so experienced to do something good with those. And, uh, well, at the time, that was just not it. I mean, look at that. It's just a random toilet. <laughs> a random plane crashed <laughs> against a tree. Oh, my God. Random statues of bird gods. <laughs> A random golden statue that is probably gonna make the game crash because of the reflections. <laughs> uh, where is he? I know he's here somewhere. 
Oh, he's probably resting at the at the staff room up there. Whatever. Is he? Hold on, let's see. Yes, he is. <laughs> and it's ticky chicky because that doesn't make any sense in Amazon. Oh my god. Anyway, so this ride is called El Volatol. And don't even try to search it in, in Spanish. Like, that doesn't even translate to anything. Like, it doesn't mean anything. It just sounds cool. <laughs> And that's definitely something I've improved on over the... This guy doesn't have any head. What happened there? Did his head fall off? What the hell happened? Okay. Oh, no, it's there. Okay. Okay, everything's fine. We're fine. And so, yeah, you go into the Amazon jungle. You can see the Bavarian buildings in the background. That's definitely jungly. And you can see a hippopotamus. Hippopotamus. If you get that reference, good job. You 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 like the same things that <laughs> as me. Oh yeah, and we have another pla plashed no crashed plane. <laughs> A plashed crane. <laughs> oh my god! And then the disappointment is immeasurable, and my day is ruined. Like look at that. That is so flat. That is a that is a shame because that's probably one of the best coasters in the park. And it's not a flatland. Oh my god. But anyway, enough talking about how bad this thing is. Let's just write that. Okay, guys? It is so bad. Actually, so bad. It's so much worse than what I thought it would be. Oh my god. Where to begin? I mean, this first drop is way too high, first of all. That first inversion is not too bad, that Immel Man. And then the Cobra Wall wants to kill you. Like, look at that. Ugh, ugh. Oh my god. That sort of zero zero is okay because it's really high. Then you have that dive loop, probably killing you as well because of the g-forces. That's kind of nice. Then the corkscrews. I'm, I don't know. They're not too bad actually. They're not too bad. But still, it's pretty bad. Like, it, it's, a, it's a shit coaster. It's so bad. Oh, the... I got scared. I actually got scared. Anyway, let's get away from this hellish place because it's so bad. <laughs> and get to an actually good place, uh, which is the Bavarian area. It's way better than the entire park. And it's definitely... Like, when you see the Bavarian area, you will understand where I come from with Parc Ciel Bleu. And, uh, yeah, you can see a lot of Paxia Blue in there. Oh. 
So this is Alpine Train, but before we go on Alpine Train, I really want to get a, a, a good feel for you guys of what the area looks like. And it's it's just a Bavarian village, you know. It's it's pretty cool. It's pretty cozy as well. And really, what I wanted to do with Parc Ciel Bleu is embrace that coziness, you know. Even though I said it in a very aggressive manner. <laughs> But yeah, I, I really think it's a, it's a nice place with Princess Amelie over there and uh, the Professor Wurst Fun Inator. Yeah, that is definitely a reference to Doofenshmirtz in uh, Phineas and Ferb. But yeah, I, I really started having some fun with the, the steampunk thingies over there. Still not, still no custom building, you'll, you'll realize, but I'm still having fun, you know. That's, that's the the main thing to to for a game you know for a game in general it's to have fun and you have the bnm hyper which is uh matterhorn anyway <laughs> now that we've done that and seen how this influenced Ciel bleu a lot let's go on alpine train with the hopes that this is going yes so this mine train is terrible. Like the layout, the speed, the, um, the 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 snappiness of everything is horrible. Like it, it's a ride that would kill you in real life. What is? Why isn't the train departing? What, what's going on? Is there a mechanic over there? There probably is. Yeah. We're gonna wait an hour for that. But anyway, yeah. As you can see, I've just made an interaction with this with with the 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 q path so why not you know that's cool and something that i'm really proud of with this uh with this mind train is the interaction with the with the q that is something i really wanted to try in general and i think it's pretty good like i honestly did a pretty good job i don't want to pat myself on the back but I mean, the, the layout is just intertwining and everything, really interacting with uh, the entire layout and, and the entire queue, and I think that's pretty good. Maybe we'll see it again? Please? Thank you! <laughs> but yeah, it's, uh, it's really janky, don't expect a, a smooth ride at all. It's... Uh, not a good ride let let me tell you that it's again really good idea poor execution that is the theme of this park <laughs> anyway hope you guys will enjoy So, tell me, how many times have you died on that ride? <laughs> oh, it's so rough, it's so bad. 
the the ideas are good the syncing with the 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 entire ride is really good like most of the rides is inter well most of the ride is interacting with itself really well and i really like that i really admire me doing that so early with my experience in the game like you you have to realize that at this point of the game i only had something like maybe a hundred two hundred hours of of of, uh, of playtime on this game which is not a lot uh, especially when you realize that i've ended 2022 with a thousand five hundred hours on planet coaster so especially essentially i've i've spent two months two whole months of 2022 on planet coaster which is monstrous actually <laughs> but anyway so that was alpine train which is a really inspired name and of course matterhorn which is a, a, an even more inspired name <laughs> oh my god Whatever. It's the last ride of the park, anyway. Oh, windy stairs. Alright. Will we be able to see it, actually? Yes. Oh. It's not dangerous at all with all those peeps that can just kill themselves on this thing. Anyway, let's not joke about that. Anyway, this is the last ride of the of the park, so I hope you guys will be able to enjoy it. It's definitely inspired by Shambhala and Silver Star, so you know nothing fancy here, really basic BNM stuff. But hey, it's always enjoyable, right? Uh, enjoy, guys. I hope you guys enjoyed Lift Hill the Ride. <laughs> That's literally the only thing in this in this poor excuse for a BNM hyper. Like the lift hill is so long. It's probably like one or two minutes long and the ride is well half of that. <laughs> oh my god. But anyway, that was actually the last ride of the park, and let's get a big overview of that park to see what I've done wrong with this park. <laughs> and um, as always, I think this is definitely a, a matter of size. It's always a, an issue with size, because when I worked on the, the first areas, everything was so complete, especially the margin area, the, the meso area, the forest area. The forest area wasn't super complete, but that's because I wanted to at the Chinese area, uh, Asian area, whatever. Um, I wasn't really sure if it was going to be Chinese or um, or Japanese or just a mix of the two or even Korean maybe. But uh, yeah, that, that's definitely the, the, the main thing here. It's that I went way too big 
and if I'd only done maybe the pirate area, the 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 Bavarian area, the the Riviera area, and the forest area, I think this would have been a complete park that would have been actually pretty decent in the end. And uh, I'm I'm really glad that I'd never finished it because well that wouldn't have been too finishable because of uh, of the choices i've made especially because of the terrain and the paint and everything that is definitely a big uh um problem that i had very early on uh i mean you can see it with the the pirate area over there but anyway i hope you guys enjoyed this video that was my hundred video like wow can you guys believe it this is insane actually because uh maybe a month and a half ago when i stopped simple park uh i really didn't want to do anything about planko anymore uh, i wanted to do playthroughs because those uh, I, I really like doing uh you know playing games with you guys and um but I wasn't sure about what I was going to do with Planko and I wanted to do vlogs as well because especially we have um, some vlogs coming up for my UK trip with uh, Corvus soon so stay tuned for that but yeah I'm happy to say that I am working on a new park in Planet Coaster and um, I'm not going to say anything like th this is what has been really stressful with Simple Park, even though this is definitely my best park yet. Um, what has been really stressful with Simple Park is that I have been on a schedule. We've talked about that. Uh, well, Cor Corvus and I have talked about that for a few months now. And what is what has really been stressful for our projects especially because i have a job he is in uni and um th therefore this is really hard to keep up uh while also having a life and uh, especially when you know that in 2022 i spent uh a thousand five hundred hours on planet coaster which is the equivalent of two months in a 12 month year so that is huge and that's why i want to have my own pace not really rush it and once it will be uh finished it will be done ready to be put on the workshop then and only then will i do any sort of video on it you know like some sort of ads or ads yeah ads or park tour or trailer even uh, you know things to advertise the park and show you the park the finished product and not only the, the building aspect because the building aspect uh, first of all my time lapses were terrible and <laughs> many people actually tell told me that and uh, I was fully aware of it but I couldn't do anything about it and because that was the format of simple park of well building a simple park and so yeah now it's just going to be more park story more atmospheric more artistic as well and i'm not gonna do any series where you follow me building the park you know that's not something that is really interesting to me anymore and it's very it was very stressful for for me to do that even though i enjoyed simple simple park like simple park is a uh, really high point in my planet coaster career if i can call that a career but anyway if you've been there since simple park um since parc ciel bleu when parc ciel bleu got first spotlighted on maddie's channel or if you've just joined me for the first time thank you so much for watching this hundredth video on golden knot park which is the park that came before parc ciel bleu if you haven't seen any of my older content, so that's exploring Parc Ciel Bleu, that is uh, building a simple park, or even my one shots on um, uh, what, what was the name uh, on Morning Star, which is the the winner of the 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 the, the flat ride contest of 2022, or uh, the park tour of the unfinished Marvelous Realms Park that I've talked about earlier in this video then you can definitely check them out in my playlist there are uh, dedicated playlists for that and well with that 
comes the end of this video. Thank you guys so much for watching. This has been Yan, your favorite friendly Frenchman, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Next Blanco one, maybe. A bientôt!